Welcome to a solo podcast, you guys. It has been a while since I've done this, um, but it just makes sense because the topic of this episode, I didn't need Willow with me. So love you, but don't need you because I'm talking all about my brand process. My brand process as a web designer and exactly how I'd recommend you streamlining basically your entire internal process, um, but more so how you're going to actually work with the client and you're going to create all the goodness because as a web designer, you are delivering a skill. You are, you have deliverables that you need to provide. And I think that's what causes the most stress and anxiety with people that are just starting out, which I totally understand. Cause I can put myself back in the early days and booking the client and being so excited. And then once that excitement <laughs> resolves, I'm like, Oh, okay. Now I actually have to do it. Great. So I'm hoping that this episode will just make it easy for you to follow along and know exactly how to work with a client when you're just starting out. Or even if you've been doing this, maybe you'll get some tips and tricks along the way to streamline things and make things easier. Um, and that maybe you haven't thought of. So let's start from ground zero. Cause I'm just going to walk you through the entire brand process. So let's say you've just, had an application in from a client and you want to book them. Now, the first thing that I'm going to recommend actually doing is going straight to Instagram and DMing them, sending them a voice note. I know that this is like such a controversial, <laughs> polarizing um, topic because I know that I've like made videos on TikTok about this and I have gotten hate that I think it's easier to sell people in the DMs than email. And people are like, that's so unprofessional. That's the worst way to do it. That's so stupid, but it works. It works. So why reinvent the wheel and not do what works? And why I think it works is because, especially if you send a voice note, I think that there's even a difference between just like Instagram messaging them and sending a voice note. But when you send a voice note, you are able to relay this emotion and this excitement that you're just not able to do over email. Emails are cold. Emails get lost. They go in the junk. I would say majority of the clients that I have tried to close, even after they've filled out an application and they've clicked the check mark of fuck yes, I'm ready to go. They still don't always get back and book with me. Whereas on Instagram, I'm closing that shit. It's been the easiest thing. It's the easiest process for you to do because when you send a voice note, you can really relay how excited you are that you, they reached out, that you're going to be this web designer for them. And you can start that connection building right off the bat where when you're still in the email, it's cold, it's not connectable. There's no relation there where when you send that voice note on Instagram, you immediately become friends. You can really feel that there's like either synergy or there's not, if there's connection or there's not, because as a web designer, it's a collaborative experience. So you need to be working on it together and you need to make sure that you connect and that your communication style is good and that you enjoy each other. And so having voice notes in that first phase is going to actually really help you along the entire brand process because a question I get asked all the time is how do you create branding without revisions in 20 minutes? How do you do that? And that's something that I've learned how to do for website in a day specifically. And it's because from the beginning, I'm building a relationship with them. I'm learning who they are, how they communicate, what they stand for, why they start their business? Why are they still doing their business when it gets hard? Why, why do they keep going? Why do they not want to quit? All of those things are going to help me identify how their brand should be. And that will help me create everything, their color palette, choose their fonts, create their logo, build their website, choose how to position them on their website and their copy. Like every single aspect helps me the more I know them. So I think from the start, if you can get used to closing them in the DMs, especially because this allows you to not do discovery calls or sales calls. I have an entire podcast on this. I think first season, if you want to go back and listen to that, because it is 
one of the most time consuming things in your business, if you are offering sales calls and discovery calls all the time. And so I learned actually how to not do this. So I don't remember the last time that I did a sales call and I'm able to find dream clients that apply. And then we we connect, we talk in the DMS, they're ready to go. They pay the invoice and boom, we're onboarding. That is what I want for all of you guys, because it gets to be that easy. I feel like there's a, there's this belief system around having things be over complicated. And I think I don't know what it stems from, but I know that when I was first starting out, a lot of the education and just things that I was like absorbing and seeing other people doing, I could reflect that it was all just making things harder and more annoying. And anyone who's done a sales call, unless you're like, I fucking love doing sales calls or I really want to do it. That's great. I'm not saying that you can't do what you want to do. But if it doesn't light you up and it gives you anxiety, you don't have to do them. And I think having it go following along my process of connecting with them via voice note, I can't just tell you more that that is like the best way to reach out and connect. It will help you so much by doing that. It will alleviate the need for a sales call because you guys can communicate and go back and forth so quickly on Instagram prompt them. What kind of questions do you have? Have them voice note you back and then send them another two minute voice message answering all their questions. Are you ready to go? Boom. Let's go. Let me send you a link. You can just expedite the experience so much quicker. I recommend it. So let's say you've booked your client. Now you're like, okay, now I have to deliver this damn thing. What am I going to do? What's my brand process? And so what I recommend is starting to onboard them the second that they say yes. As soon as you get that, yes, send the invoice, send the contract, whatever you need to do, all of your invo invoicing material, send it over their way so that right away they're on your books and you're rocking and rolling. You also want to start your project when they're still really excited because that's going to allow the momentum. And so because you're going to need things from your client. You need photos, you need images. You want to make sure that you ride the excitement because then it'll actually be less annoying for them to gather the things that you need. So it's the best thing. That's why in my website in a day, um, onboarding process, as soon as they pay, they go to a thank you page where they get access to a Google doc and an entire outline of everything I need from them so that they right away start gathering all of that. And I just think that I've noticed when you allow them to ride that momentum and ride that excitement, it actually makes it 10 times easier for them to hand over everything. And I know it's so annoying to wait for her images and copy. And so ride the momentum. So what I recommend, and obviously your process is going to be different based on whatever package you just closed because your website in a day process is going to be different because what I teach inside design your day rate, which is the course that I teach you how to launch a website in a day and basically do everything in it. Um, what I teach is you will not have a call or a connection point with them until the morning of your day. So 10 AM is go time. You wake up, you do your VIP call. And so that's the call that you will go through everything. You'll identify, you have a series of questions that you'll ask to really get to know them and get to know their brand, get to know their vision, everything that will help you in the long run, create their brand. Then you go into brand creation mode. So it's kind of similar to what I would recommend if it were to be like a custom package or template customization. It just obviously is more expedited during website in a day. Whereas if it is a long-term project, you could take your time, you could schedule your call. And then maybe you have like a follow-up call where you propose the brand idea, you get all of your feedback. Like it really just depends on what works for you. That's something that's so cool about being a web designer is that it's really just based off of what works for you. It's something that works for someone else might not work for you. And that's 100% okay. You just have to figure out what works for you. So on let's say website in a day specifically, 
you'll do your call. And what I always recommend is on that call, you could kind of have it two ways. You could have them be prepared. So let's say you have the series of questions of getting to know them, which I actually include, like if you're in web, a wealthy web designer, you get access to all of those, but this is like the brand guidebook of questions to ask them so that you can get to know them and start building on the strategy behind their brand and website. But you could either request that they pre-fill it out. So I have done it both ways. I've done it to where they get on a call with me. They've never seen this before. And I just go through the series of questions. I'm asking them and I'm taking notes. And then at the end, I do a Pinterest exercise. That's one way. And I've done it that way. I've also done it to where I have them prepped. I send them the Google doc of series of questions, or I've also had it in, um, like a type form before you could send it to them. They fill it all out so that you then prior to your call, you have all the information that you want and need. So you can read up, you already know about them. And then you go through it again, just as a secondary Um, approach so that you could maybe learn something new or you deep dive into their answer. Something that I've learned is that you'll have two types of clients. One client that will like share every fucking thing about them, every single story they could ever think of. They're writing novels. And then you could also have a client that gives the absolute bare minimum. So it sometimes is helpful having all of the questions prior so that when you get onto the call, you can really ask more, especially if they barely shared anything you can, you have to know, and it's your responsibility to actually get what you need in order to do your job. So your job is to create the branding, to create the website and to really learn about them so that you can create the strategy behind it. And so if they didn't give, you need to pull more, you need to ask for more. And so you can use that call to really get what you need out of it in order to do your job. And don't be afraid to do that. They're hiring you as an expert. They're hiring you for your expertise in this. And so don't be afraid to ask for what you need because it will end up in a better scenario for them in the long run. So they'll be happy that you asked. So you can use that time for the call where you go through all of their questions. Um, and, Like I said, I've done it both ways and it really just depends on how you work and how, what you want. Like sometimes there's a benefit to going through it without them ever having the answers because then it really can be conversational and you really can get to know them like on a real deep level where it doesn't feel like you're just like going over a series of questions that they've already answered. And a lot of the time then they'll be like, Oh, I already like said that in there where it's really just like let's get to know each other. I have these questions just as a base, but I just want to see where this goes. And you just like really deep dive. And so sometimes it's more organic to not, but also it's sometimes really nice being prepared so that you can dive deep and really get all the information that you need. So I would recommend trying both, seeing which one works for you. Then I always recommend going to Pinterest. Pinterest is going to be like the best place for inspiration. Even I, to this day, still to this day, if I am creating something new, if I'm launching something or I'm creating a new sales page, or I am doing a photo shoot, whatever it is, I go to Pinterest and I draw inspiration from there because it is like the land of inspo. It is so easy and I think fun. And so I would recommend trying to make it like a fun exercise in your brand process so that your client feels like it's fun. And while sometimes it might feel redundant, like, Oh, this is so stupid. Like, are they going to think it's cool that I'm like going to Pinterest and just like drawing inspiration from these other images? Actually, yes, because a lot of the time they've never done this before. Like they aren't thinking about it. They're not creative. A lot of people have a hard time even identifying what they like and being able to pull all these images and grasp on to what they actually like and what they want their brand to look like. That's your job. That's why they're hiring you. And so it might feel like, oh, that's so silly. Like, why would I do that? It actually will help visually so much because then you can pull up images images and talk through. Like even I found that pulling up fonts, if you type in fonts on Pinterest and you pull them up, you're sharing your screen with your client. You can be like, what do you think about this font? And they'll tell you, 
And a lot of the time they'll be like, I love that. Or I fucking hate that font or no, I actually really like this one. So you can actually ask why, why do you not like this font? Like that's the best thing I can recommend in your entire brand process. Working with a client is to ask why they say they like something. If they say, let's say they show a competitor's website and they're like, I really love this. Ask why, why do you love this? What do you like about it? Do you like the colors? Do you like the images? Do you like the way that it flows? Do you like this menu? Ask questions about why they like something. And same goes if they say they don't like something. They're like, I really don't like that font. Ask them why. What does it make them feel like? When they see it, why do they know that they don't like it? So that you can really learn what they like and what they don't like. That will help you as a web designer, just as a creative in general, so much through the design process, because I got it down to where I wasn't even doing revisions. Most of the time with clients, I'd send something over and they'd be like, bomb, that's perfect. Love it so much. And that's because I really understand them. I got into their head and I figured out why they like something, why they don't. I figured out their thought process so that when I'm designing, I can remember, oh, they don't like it like this. Oh, I remember that they like this or that they don't for this reason. And so I'm going to try this, whatever it is, trying to actually really understand them is going to be the best freaking thing ever. So when you're doing the Pinterest board, it's the same as the Google doc of brand questions, because it really just is it's dependent on you, your personality, how you want to hold these calls. Also on your confidence level, how early on are you? Are you nervous to get on a call and ask questions um, or to go on to Pinterest and be like, I don't know how to ask them or prompt them or do it. Like if that gives you anxiety, prep it out, have them have it as homework, maybe create like a one-time loom video, walking them through you going through the exercise and the exercise is so obviously all of my advice is always find what works for you because this is what worked for me. It's what's worked for some students, but not all students. And that's totally okay. Some students have taken it and tweaked it and you just figure out what really works for you. And I think that's, what's the beauty of being a web designer and being a creative, but something that's really fun that I've always done is I created the Pinterest boards to being like an in-person studio, an in-person office, in-person vibe, because I specifically always worked with online business owners. And a lot of times online business owners have never considered what their brand should actually feel like in real time existence. So I always wanted to bring their online brand into a real life version of themselves so that they could really piece things together and figure out how they actually wanted it to feel. They wanted the space to feel. How was it? Like I used to ask if you were to have an in-person thing with your dream clients, where would it be? Some people would be like, I want it to be, you know, in a beautiful villa in Bali on the beach. I want like surfboards and I want palm trees and pools and like big coconut things. And so right away I can already imagine the vibe, right? It's going to have like blues and tans and it's going to be sunny with sky and ocean and be like beachy surfer vibes. That's the vibe, right? So leaning way more boho. And so then I totally had clients on the other side where they're like, I'd rent out like a really sick modern office space. I want really tall, modern windows. I want it to be like kind of industrial concrete floors and like, you know, maybe a velvet couch or whatever, whatever they'd say, I can already start imagining. It's going to be way more editorial. They want white, they want black, they want hard edges, they want sharp corners, all of that stuff. And so it, how they want something to be in person, it actually really showcases what they imagine it to be in real life. And so I think that was the easiest way for me. Now, this is totally up to you though. Figure out how it helps you to find your client's vision and just to get into their head. That's really the main focus is to figure out what they actually just want. What do they want? What do they want it to feel like? What do they want it to be like? How do they want it to look? And so you'll figure that out. But from that call, then 
I would take that Pinterest board, the whole vision, and I would run with it. Now, then I would create the brand board. So I always liked to then piece all of the inspiration photos together and really create like a brand vision with everything. I'd pull some like fun fonts that maybe we looked at. I'd like pick out some of the colors from the photos and I would just like see it as a whole big picture from their inspiration that they pulled. Then I would pull all of the colors. So I would always choose a color palette. And I definitely recommend, it really depends, but I would say you probably want four to five brand colors where you have a main one to two main primaries, and then you want two like lesser used ones. And then maybe like a really neutral one that could is either like the white or the tan or the, it's the classic background for them, whatever it is. And so that will always be case by case. Some brands have all primary colors and they're bright and they're fun and it's chaotic and I love it. And it's so fun where then some are super moody and mute and there's a black and there's like a couple tans and white and they freaking love it. And so it really just is all different. And that's the coolest thing about being a designer because you really get to cater it to what they look for. And there's no like set rules. It's art. You're creating art and there's no rules in art. And so you can really just create what you want and what you love and what you feel like looks good, especially if they love it. And that's the most important part of it. So once you create those, then I would recommend pulling some custom fonts. So my favorite place to always buy fonts is just creative market. You can go on, you can buy, there are great font designers on there. And what I would recommend, well, you can either do it a couple different ways. You could have them buy the rights or you could buy the rights. It really depends, but you will need multiple different rights if you are designing their website and like, let's say a logo or graphics, because you either have the right of the font to like, let's say put it into Canva where you can put it onto graphics, um, or a logo or something like that, that you're basically only ever downloading it and then using it on something, or you have to have the web font rights. And that's where then you can put it in to show it or Squarespace or WordPress or whatever it is. Um, and so you either need both or unless you're just doing one, then that's totally fine. But just make sure that you get like the legal rights to the fonts. Creative market is great. Then I would always with the brand, I'd create two options, two or three depending, but I probably would only ever do two, um, that are quite different from each other. Cause I'd like to either, I'd like to be able to take the vision and put it into the main board. But then really I'd like to like take two different split identities from that where one is maybe a little bit sexier and darker and edgy. And then the other one's like a little bit softer and white and mute and just see what they feel more connected to. Um, I like them to feel a little bit contrast from each other. Um, but that's all new colors different fonts, different vibe, different photos from the same doc, but you just pull different photos so that the overall vibe is different. So then you send it off you have two different options. And you're like, which one do you like more? And then you, they'll tell you sometimes they're like, I freaking love option B run with it, go with it, no edits. And if that's the case, that's great. You did your job amazingly, but it's okay if there's totally revisions sometimes people have multiple revisions. However, I will say, try and get all your revisions done in one time. This is something that I learned throughout the years is someone would say, someone would give me feedback. They'd be like, Ooh, I don't love the red. Then I'd run and I'd change the red. And then I'd come back and they're like, yeah, great. What about this font? And then I'd be like, great. Edit that, come back. And they're like, okay, great. And then what about this where I'm like coming back and forth and back and forth and where it's creating like fucking eight revisions and it takes forever Instead, ask them what they like about it, what they don't like about it, and get them to tell you everything all at once. Even if they're like, I love the red, but I don't love this. And you're like, great. Anything else? Do you see anything else? Do you like this? Do you like this element? Ask them, prompt them so that they tell you everything all at once, because then you can take that and go do your revision one time and it will save so much time so much time. Once I learned how to do this efficiently, it changed the game. It was the best. So I highly, highly recommend trying to just consolidate your revisions into one, ask them questions. I feel like sometimes it's uncomfortable 
asking them, what do you not like about something that you just created? I know that that isn't the most comfortable thing, but it will save you time. And it's really just ego getting in the way if you're scared of asking that because it's okay if they don't like something. It's okay if they want something changed. That's why they hired us. They're going to have feedback. And so we want to just make sure we're doing our job and we're listening to them. We're giving them an opportunity to tell us what they love and what they don't love so that we can then go take those revisions, make it what they do love, come back and be like, great. Are we good? Great. So let's say you get the hell. Yes. Amazing run with it. Then I would go straight into kind of like the second phase of onboarding for the web design. I would then, you know, if it's a long term, I'd use something like Asana or Notion where you start gathering all their information. You start the design phase. You'd start the home page. I always do the home page first and then you can kind of do it a couple different ways and it will be very different if you have website in a day. So, if you take design your day rate, it's going to be a different process. Um way more streamlined, quicker, efficient. It'll feel like a whole different user experience for your client, um, just so that it's really quick because it's that quick turnaround. So it will be different, but then I'd recommend just going straight into the design and starting that collaboration if it is a longer term project. Um, but hopefully at that point, once you get through that brand process and you have the Google doc, you have learned who they are and all of the things that you needed to know to create that beautiful brand identity, they've given you the thumbs up hopefully all that information will allow you to have the most seamless web design experience. And that's the whole point. It's like, it's really the foundational phase of you actually creating the beautiful website. So I feel like they totally go hand in hand. I love that being the process where it's the first thing and it's just really intentional. And like your main goal is to get to know them and create something that hopefully they're not able to create themselves. That's the whole point of being a web designer, brand designer, creative is that you're able to get into their head and create something that they have never been able to actually imagine and create into real life terms. And that's what you're doing for them. So I really hope that that was helpful. I love going through brand process stuff. I know that it's like one of the hardest things to get streamlined and just perfected. And I will say like, it took me forever to feel confident and to say like, this is my brand process. This is what I'm going to do. It's so easy. It's streamlined. It's quick. It's a good experience. And at this point I've had hundreds of clients go through this exact same brand process. And so I know it works. I know it's easy, especially the more you do it, the more confidence you get. And so I really hope that that is the case for you. Um, I have some questions that I'm going to answer because every episode at the end, we are doing our web design hotline. So let's just get right into it to wrap up the episode. So one, when your portfolio was just mock-ups you created of other brands, did you tell people that? No, unless they asked. So that's something about owning a business and positioning and marketing, because when would I say that? If you think about in a time that you are uploading a portfolio piece to Pinterest and you're making reels showcasing it, when would it be needed to say, by the way, these aren't real clients? No, just talk about how it's your design. Talk about what you're designing on. Talk about who these designs are for, who your dream client is, who you want to help, who you want to serve. You don't need to disclose that it's not for a real client. However, if someone commented or someone messaged you and was like, Hey, I really want to work with you. Just want to know like whose websites are these don't lie. Don't say that they're real people when they're not, but it's about positioning. You don't need to disclose something when it's your portfolio. That's your design. That is showcasing your design ability. And that's why people are going to hire you. So I hope that helps. Then how do you go about clients who don't have good quality images slash videos to provide? <sighs> don't work with them. No, I have talked a lot about this. It's always going to be easier if they have good images and videos. And so try and make it a prereq for you. Have it be a desired thing from a client. Have it be when you identify who your dream client is, have it be on there. Say that they 
want to work with a copywriter or they just did, they just worked with a photographer, they have good videos. That's fine. You can manifest your dream clients and have criteria of what you're looking for. Now, of course I've had clients that haven't, and I've just made it work. A lot of the time I will fill it with stock photos and then it's because they're doing a photo shoot and they just haven't yet with me. And so they're going to then fill them in. I'll do a loom video teaching them how to do it. Super easy. Um, now if they have horrible photos and they aren't willing to do a photo shoot, you could do a couple different things. You could do stock photos, um, and let them know that it's not going to be the, what maybe your portfolio showcases because they have real good brand photos, um, or highly recommend them to do a photo shoot and have photographers in your area that you can recommend at all different price points and really just try and be the authority and expert that they're hiring and recommending it as a professional, letting them know that the outcome for them, their investment on the website is going to be much better if they do invest also in photos and video. So I hope that helped. Um, those are the questions questions from our students actually inside the club. All of our students have access to the club. If you're not a student yet, become a student, get access to the club. Um, you get the club with all of our courses. So we'll continue to answer all these questions at the end of all of our podcast episodes. And if you want to come hang out, it's I am Becca Luna on everything. And that was a great episode. So thanks guys. And definitely if you end up implementing this brand process into your business, let me know, tag me on Instagram, DM me, reach out. Cause I'd love to see it all in live action. And with that, we'll see you next episode.